the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. judge you care for your children with firmness and compassion by your spirit nurture us who live in your kingdom that we may be rooted in the way of your son Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord amen, amen. please be seated for the readings The first reading is from Isaiah 44, verses 6 through 8. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from the, of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear them, or be afraid, for I have n I, I have I not told you from the old and declared it. You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, is it, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. In fact, if we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. 
We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For hope for what is seen, for, excuse me, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put forth to them another parable. He said, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons and daughters of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. The parable in today's gospel reading follows directly upon the parable we had last week, but this is slightly different. This other parable is taken also from scenes of agriculture in Jesus' day, but this newer parable focuses on final judgment. Today it seems we have a lot of judgment already in social circles, even faith communities. Nevertheless, God postpones judgment. I say that the promise we face currently is resisting temptation to judge one another. Jesus uses a kind of a word play in this parable, I would say, which points to an issue of condemning one another before the time when God will be the judge. The Lord compares 
Jesus' mission of giving good grace to the world, to the way a farmer places good seed into the earth. And yet we know we have serious problems in the world now, and there were serious threatening forces in Jesus' day as well. As certainly as God, out of perfect grace, works on the behalf of people, all people everywhere, surely someone is going to fight back against God's activity. Jesus said, well, everybody was asleep. That's everybody. That's all of us and all of you. While asleep, an enemy came and planted weeds in the field. And among the wheat, is this, these weeds were planted. And the interpretation given in the Gospel of Matthew is that this enemy is none other than the devil himself. It's not difficult to find various wicked ways that the enemy tries to kill people in our world today. Because that's the only way I know of to describe for you what I consider to be demonic. It's unjust, unnecessary, premature death. So there does usually seem to be someone attacking some believer sometime in the world. We see also in large social systems, which we cannot do without in any country, we have social systems in our country that are usually a force for good, but sometimes there's a lack of justice in the way these things can be accessed by people. Think about bad or non-existent health care. Think about inadequate education systems now under attack simply because of the lack of funds and concern over the virus. Think about uncontrolled spread of alcohol and drug addiction that is fueled, I believe, by these problems of in inadequate resources and inadequate income year after year, generation after generation. Well, I think health care and education are a step in the right direction. But even in those well-meaning systems, we have serious life-threatening problems. So, however, some of the worst attacks come against the people of the world, especially wars. However these happen, they can happen most dangerously right within faith communities with what I would call insincere believers. Jesus called them something like players, hypocrites. Let us not be that. In the parable, the master restrains his worker who wants to go ahead and pull the weeds out, get rid of the evil work. But the owner of the field has a longer view and far more patience, love, compassion, and good grace than any of us have. Anybody who's ever worked a garden knows how easy it is to get some weeds in the middle of that nutritious food plant because after all, sometimes you can't even tell the difference by looking for a long time. Perhaps even when it's just about time for the grain or the corn or the beans or tomatoes to be ripe and ready to be picked. We know how tough it can be to tell the difference. Maybe it's just okay to accept the fact that God didn't even give us the ability to see the difference every time between evildoers and good ones. In the parable Jesus has given us that we're studying today, even a person doing the weeding makes mistakes. But in the parable, there seem not to be any mistakes with the sorting out of the evildoer and the righteous. The parable shows the gracious tolerance of God. May we be more tolerant like our Father. The master in the parable says to the servants, let them both grow together until the harvest. You see, in the kingdom, God does not want the work of final judgment to be rushed. Don't, don't rush it. 
You don't need to. The time of the harvest comes in a time of grace, and people need to have the opportunity to change their mind. That is what repentance means. People deserve what God intends for them, an opportunity to ask for a second chance. So it's true. Faithful people are prone to think that evil is winning out. Sometimes we think the scales are tipped toward the evil in the world, but that's not the way it is. God's patient with sinners, willing to wait for those who want to repent eventually. And we all know of instances where this has happened in people's lives, with sudden changes of mind and direction, sudden coming to faith. When I was visiting a patient in the trauma center where I lived years ago, I met a woman who came to a saving faith while she was living in a state prison. And she spoke of her time as an inmate and explained how grateful she was in the moments that I met her, that she had to stay put long enough to get sober enough and settled enough to finish learning how to read and to hear a preacher preach and to have a Bible and read it and understand it. And she didn't wish anybody to have to go to prison, nor do I, but she found gratitude even for that crisis in her life. She told me that her faith in Christ saved her. And she even forgave the drunk driver who put her in the trauma center ICU after a crash years, years after she straightened her life out. <laughs> She was quite a lady. The time until the harvest that we're living through right now is the time that God is allowing for people to come to a knowledge of love and grace given by our Creator, shown forth by the Son of God, and certainly broadcast by the inspiration of God's Spirit. We might think nothing's happening, This is all just a game we're playing, but that's not true either. We might be uninterested in reaching out to people who are different from us, people who turn us off, but that's all right. God has put someone there who will overcome such prejudice. If the servants in the parable Jesus Jesus told find the forgiving patient attitude kind of impossible, That's all right, too, because the Lord in that parable assured those servants that everything would turn out all right in the end. Here's what the quote should be. At the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first, bind them in bundles to be burned. Let's not mistake the delay of the weeding as some kind of indifference on the part of God. In due time, God will appoint the moment for final judgment of our world. The point is, there is no delay in God doing good in the world. It only seems that way. What appears to be postponement, it may be a sign of our own impatience with God. God does not know exactly what we might think God knows. But God does know what is happening in our world today more than we know. God is about a final harvest, a bringing together into a home together, into a family together of all people everywhere. And God brings meaning into what seems like a graceless world. And to some of us, it seems like a hopeless chaos. Yet no one knows how evil and stubborn Our own generation is more than God knows. The Lord knows that not everyone will immediately respond to God's precious offer of love. But at the end, whatever that is, of the age, whatever that is, that's the time when worthless things will be gone. Weeds are thrown into the fire to be burned. In the parable, the master orders the wheat to be gathered into his barn by angels. That's the beauty of the little dictionary of terms in the second part of the parable, the explanation inside the house. 
The parable we learn is illustrating the magnificent hospitality and welcoming power of God, the one who made us. God who consistently makes every effort that you could possibly imagine and more to gather in the ones he loves, which is everyone. Jesus himself became a victim of the impatience of certain religious people in his world, his time, who thought they could bring about the kingdom, as they would think of it, by weeding out the ones they thought were evil, especially the one we call the Son of God. The result was that impatient people crucified the Lord in a firm conviction that they were doing the right thing, unaware that everyone always has been loved in God's sight. God did what is necessary, and Jesus was raised from the dead. His resurrection proclaims to the world that God is God everywhere, always, for us all. The last word is spoken by God. For the sake of people who condemn others, to save them from the fire that is described in the parable. God does these gracious things for the sake of those who have not heard, not quite understood, never quite accepted the love of God, maybe never knew what love was at all. For the sake of the death and resurrection of Christ, you are gathered in. The parable should show us that God's extremely patient. Remember the times in your life when you weren't so patient and the times when you were so relieved that someone was patient with you. Maybe it's in the years of our adolescence or our middle age or any time we were in crisis, we tend to be weaker. Still, God doesn't give up on us. I'm grateful for the extreme patience of God with us and with people then and now you know, God has not moved on without you or without me. We are in his loving arms, in his embrace. embrace. Remember, intolerance will never be part of the household of God. Avoid judging others. Avoid being too harshly the judge of yourself. Because as we are, as ourselves have experienced the patience of God, we're probably going to be more patient with others and show love. That's all. Let's stand and sing the hymn of the day.
Let us confess our words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. In, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of a new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. God of nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open the hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned who feel trapped by despair. We pray for the sick, especially those who have requested our prayers. Brian, Brian Jennifer, Jennifer Bert, Bert, Parker, Gloria, Lori, Connor, Lisa, Lisa Betty, Betty, Kim, Debbie, Don, Judy, Heidi, Cy Carlson's family, youth ministry, and all faith communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Here other intercessions may be offered. Lord, bless with peace and confidence both of my friends who are having surgery very soon. Bring the healing that you desire for them and give them great health. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of life. Those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share Christ's peace with each other. God's peace be with you. Be with
God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are the signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in our world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song, amen. amen. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and always.